Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back here on the show. I'm going to talk about some NBA news. So let's get around to it. So, Brian Windhorst said this, quote, If Jalen Brown, Jalen Brown, gets voted All-NBA, he's going to stay a Celtic. He's, if Jalen doesn't get voted All-NBA, he's going to be a free agent, per Brian Windhorst. This doesn't make sense. Like, why, though? Why, if he wasn't an All-NBA, he'd leave? That just doesn't make sense. Good thing he'll be voted All-NBA, though. Like, there's no way he doesn't get it. He's At worst, he's going to be second team. Like, can this dude stop lying? Like, I don't know what he's talking about. I really don't. But I guess it kind of makes sense. Because you stay for that Supermax, only Boston can offer if All-NBA. So he'll be an All-NBA team. He's at least going to be second team. So good thing he's staying home. So I don't think he's going to enter free agency. Good thing he's second team All-NBA, though. He's going to stay. I just don't know what Brian Windhorst means. If he's going to stay a sale, if he's voted All-NBA, he's going to stay a sale. If he doesn't vote, get voted All-NBA, he's going to be free agent. Maybe that's something to do with the Supermax of... He isn't on an All NBA. He could go to another team. I don't know. So the Kings play-by-play announcer on the Warriors said, "I'm um, via ESPN one third one three two zero Sacramento." And Kyle Drapper said, "They're not a legacy franchise. They want to be the Lakers. They want to be the Celtics. They want to get that respect." It's been the Warriors the last couple of years now. The Kings are just now getting back in the playoffs. The Kings, they're going to talk all this trash. They're going to get humbled. The Kings are going to get humbled this week. Or starting tonight, they're going to get humbled. Like, they're like the 90s Bulls of this era. So yes, they've become a legacy franchise. Like, he's wrong. Definitely. The Warriors are, are legit a dynasty. Like, what is this dude talking about? I swear people want the Warriors... I swear people want the Warriors to win so bad saying shit like this will just motivate them even more. Like, people say this and that motivates the Warriors even more. Because they see the chatter. They see what everybody's saying. The Kings made the playoffs for the first time in like 18, 19 years. And they don't know how to act. And they're they're gonna be a first round exit. They made the playoffs for the first time since the fall of Rome, and they don't know how to act. Like I'm taking Steph, Dre, and Clay over anybody, or I'm taking this Warriors team over everybody because they step it up in the playoffs. I know they played bad on the road, but the slates clean, uh, zero zero on the road, and the playoff Warriors are different than the regular season. Like, what, what's Bud laughing about, or waffling about, bro? The man or disrespect from the Kings to the Warriors, bro. Like, they're literally a legacy franchise. Man, you can't wait for the Kings to get humbled. We're going to humble the Kings and their fans. And that play-by-play announcer. Whatever the hell his name is. Probably, nobody probably even knows who he is, honestly. Um, Matt, so... Matt Kings on Kyrie potentially going to the Lakers this summer said, quote, when the Lakers want someone, they get him. <sighs> They're not going to get Kyrie Irving. They're not re-signing D'Lo, Reeves, Schroeder, Vanderbilt, and re-signing Kyrie. Obviously, D'Lo would leave then. If he sails in the playoffs, then Lakers will definitely let him go. And they'll probably keep Reeves, Schroeder, maybe Schroeder, I don't know. They're going to keep Vanderbilt and Reeves, definitely, but I don't know about the other two. But, oh, are the, are you sure about that, Matt Barnes? Yeah, just like they got Kawhi, Paul George, DeRozan, Buddy Hill, Miles My, Turner, all those rumors. Yeah. They're not getting Kyrie. He would destroy that team chemistry. Just, it's just proven Kyrie's uh, just ruins teams. The Nets, the Celtics. The Mavericks. I mean, sorry, just hate to say the truth. Watch him end up signing, get all those expectations up for him to just sign like 
TJ McConnell. Rick Barry said on the NBA quote, it is insane that they don't have an MVP for the Western Conference and an MVP for the Eastern Conference. Uh, and quote, Rick Barry on the NBA. That's kind of true, though. People say, oh, no, it's lame, but MLB does it. They have a... They have that. They have an AL MVP and an NL MVP. That's one thing they do get right. They do for the NL and the AL. Separate MVPs. People are claiming this as if there aren't people out there, quote, flexing a clutch player in a three-point contest champ in resume debates. But every team plays each other at least twice. The MLB is different where you primarily just play your conference aside from a couple of others. But, I don't know. This would definitely be an interesting if the NBA had this. But I, can't, I, but I do get saying this would be a dumb idea. I would get it. I get it. Paul George says he wants all the smoke with Jalen Ramsey on the football field. Jalen Ramsey right now be be like, oh yeah. Shouldn't this dude be focusing on the upcoming playoff series? I mean, I don't even, I don't even know if he's going to play. He's actually hurt right now, so he ain't going to play. But Paul George, you're injured, sir. You, you don't need to be on the football field. Javaris Crittenton is scheduled to be released from prison soon via WSB TV Metro Atlanta. So he's going to be released from prison soon, apparently. So uh, the backstory on this was uh, he was uh, he was arrested uh, pursuant to a January. 10th, 2014, indictment of him and a thir and 13 other persons who were accused of selling multi-kilo quantities of cocaine and several hundred pounds of marijuana. He was charged of two counts of conspir conspir conspiracy to violate the Georgia Controlled Substance Act. Um, so yeah, that's basically the context on this. Well, how is this possible? He was sentenced to 23 years in 2015. It's only been seven and a half years. So he basically, I thought he got life for murder. That's crazy. J.J. Reddick feels that more NFL lifestyle coverage of the NBA on ESPN would be beneficial. Uh, he said, he said, quote, those guys do a great job of breaking down. If we could do more of that with our coverage, I think that would be great for the fans, said J.J. Redick, in quote. Uh, I don't know. NBA Today is kind of just a gossip show most of the time. NBA Today is mid compared to like NFL Live. Ch Chini, how do you say your name? And RJ are actually decent analysts though. But it's better because the NFL Live crew, they have no agendas. They don't play favorites and give their actual like opinions. They don't. Like. They don't play favorites. Reddick, J.J. Reddick definitely it shows favoritism. But Tim Legler doesn't show favoritism, which I actually like Tim Legler because he's actually really an analyst and he doesn't show and he doesn't show like favoritism, no bias. Well, Dan Orlovsky kind of does play favorites on NFL Live, but Mina and uh, Swagoo, they don't play favorites. A Rod's getting criticized left and right. But it's better because the show gives the chances to talk about the X's and the O's, break down like some plays, the film and whatever. 
There's little tactical stuff in the NBA media sphere. Another thing I have to say. NBA code is so casual and narrative driven. Like it's narrative driven. And would be great to have some actual analysts on the broadcast and studio shows. And rather than having, oh, LeBron versus MJ. Like, guys like B-Ball Breakdown and other stuff. Um, but I mean, to be fair, Kenny does break down film and Chuck tries to sound like he knows what he's talking about. Shaq is just there for entertainment. But Kenny's film breakdowns are some of the best parts of that show. But it only lasts for about a minute, though. But it shows that they know what they're talking about. At least. So if they're showing some film, know what they're talking about, even if it's only a minute. Some of the guys on other platforms aren't entertaining and don't know what they're talking about. Guys like B-Ball Breakdown on YouTube and like Kyle J. Mann that do like breakdowns, they know what they're talking about. But more analysts, less forced debates than saying, oh, who's the GOAT, MJ, LeBron, who's the GOAT? Like, I'm tired of the fucking debate. Like, debate, like, less forced debates have more analysts. NFL Live is like all analysts and breakdown. The NFL, they do NBA, they don't do any of that. So, um, the Thunder lost to the Timberwolves last night. So, the Timberwolves are going to face the Nuggets in the first round. I want to give a shout out to Shea Gilgis Alexander on a, on a great season. He put, he put up 31.4 points per game this year, 5.5 assists, nearly 5 rebounds a game shot, 51% from the field, 90 from the free throw line, and he's the youngest star in NBA history. To average 30 plus points per game. Yeah. And shoot 50 plus percent from the field. He's a certified buck, and they're gonna they're gonna be something special. Um. Because over the next five years, they have two first-round picks in the 2023 draft, four in 2024, four in 2025, three in 2026, and two in 2027. Fifteen over the next five draft, fifteen first-round picks. They're going to be something special, that young court would we'll chat back next year. The legit big man, Thunder, going to be scary, a good, scary young team. He's going to be, a, he's a, already a superstar. If people only say he's a superstar in the making, I'd, 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 I'd call him a superstar right now. Parents say, oh, he's the worst player to average 30 with all due respect. And, oh, look at the free throws he gets per game. But then don't foul him. He doesn't shoot threes that much. Um, but, yeah. Um, so that's it for the for the NBA. So until next time, I have a lot. Peace.